And action! <laughs> Disgust me. Grow up. How you doing, folks? Episode 17 of What's the Script? Uh, thanks for coming back to us again this week. Christopher, how are you? <laughs> cool as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting an answer in a pure Elvis voice here, but... No, because that's, 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 that's a racist, mate. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening on the, uh, the pod forums, uh, where Christopher's got a lovely pair of Elvis specs... Vegas ones, you know the ones. Everybody's got a pair. I've got them somewhere in a drawer. <laughs> I mean, I could, only lay on, I could only lay my hands on my blue tinted Tony Starks this morning. <laughs> I've got them after because you've got a tint with them on there. It's like you've got That's the jaundice. Right. You came in any colour of tint you wanted, so they did. Nice. Nice fucking nice blue tint and all that. They look, they look a job. Don't make me any richer, but. Standing out for Elvis either. <laughs> well, let's go on. Yeah, so uh, this will uh, contain spoilers. <laughs> aye, spoiler alert. Check the specs. As we said last week, uh, after doing Fall Love and Thunder, we were going to do another uh, new release box office extravaganza cinematic fucking Yahoo, and it was Elvis, uh, the movie, starring Tom Hanks and Austin Butler primarily. Uh, I seen that. Like four weeks ago in Blackpool. Um, my daughter's seen it five times. My missus seen it twice. And there's a lot of, lot of good reports as well for other people that have seen it two and three times. But Chris, you seen it yesterday, didn't you, mate? Aye, I did. I did indeed. And I've, I've given it some thought, right? I, I do like it, right? But I was, oh. I was expecting like a proper C biopic, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Well, I say to you, like, I would have uh, liked to have seen like, how some of the songs were created and all this. Like maybe him travelling about for a bit. It was like a highlight reel, wasn't it? And he... Aye, it was a movie. It Aye. was a movie. Do you know, see the way you're discussing, I would like to see that as well. Uh, see the way Peter Jackson done Get Back. Aye. The Beatles on Disney, that was fantastic. See if it was to, somebody was to unearth some sort of fucking footage like that. Mm-hmm. And get kind of nine hours behind the scenes, and that would be fantastic. Aye, aye. aye. It's just to see the whole. It's like you're kind of like Bohemian's Rhapsody for day and all that. Like you kind of seen the main again? of no <laughs> <laughs> Bohemian's Rhapsody. I want to see Bohemian's. Aye, ah, it's it's good coke that. <laughs> it's good. It's good ginger. <laughs> <laughs> the working lady to the sailor. Hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's see stuff like that and like, uh, like walk the line. You kind of seen. Aye. It was like a song. It was like a like a mainstay like through the but this that you didn't really kind of get it sort of thing. You know what I mean? But as you pointed out, it was like kind of through the the colonel's side of the story. You know what I mean? Aye. What he seen because you wouldn't see all that part because he wasn't there. Mm-hmm. But, do you know, did, so you don't think there was one song that was a mainstay through this at all? Not that I remember. I, I just kept hearing uh, his, his first hit all the way through it. He kept going back to it, even in the later thing. He was rejigging it and going back to it and back to it. And then he was regressing his memories. He was going back to it all the time. Walk the line, it was uh, Jackson, wasn't it? Aye, kind of. Aye. 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 Um, but I, I totally understand what you're saying, mate. And you've got a a valid point there. I, I could go like a bio of that behind the scenes and probably see something for the first time that nobody's seen. You uh, know what I mean? Elvis kind of himself and off guard. Mm-hmm. But as a movie, see, I know I've, I've built this up to you for like three and a half weeks because I was taken aback by it. I really was. I went, I think I was gone to see a biopic, a half-assed biopic. I didn't have a lot of expectation for it at all. 
and then it just opened up with the Colonel talking. Tom Hanks, as we know, played a brilliant part as well. Uh, and then it was just it was all through his 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 eyes kind of hanging about how he's seen himself as the fucking the guy that discovered him. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then as we went through the fifties and the sixties, the seventies, the kind of the cinematography mirrored the era. I mean, they did the big flashbang bits and all that kind of aye, stuff. Aye, all that. <laughs> so I, aye. I, just, I was just taken aback, but it kind of flew in for me. It felt like I sat there for half an hour and I, I came out there wanting to watch fucking Elvis on YouTube and all that. Aye. Oh, well, I did do that anyway, but it was just at the ending, but because it's fuck. See, well, I came back and I said that if people, I was like, it's good. It finishes strong, but it's oh. fucking, it's heartbreaking as fuck, man. Mm-hmm. See, if. Well, what it kind of leads you to believe is I think Elvis kind of killed himself slowly, sort of thing, because his spirit was fucking, like, already dead, so to speak. You know what I mean? By the way, folks, spoiler. That's a spoiler. I've got. <laughs> <laughs> but really, we're going to be divulging stuff that you can see in the annals of history anyway. It's nothing going to be too spoilery. We'll get to the, you know I mean, the acting and the storytelling and the part, but like you said there, mate, I, as it's fucking, I think that got me missed that last half hour, 40 minutes, just fucking kind of, I was well up on that, you know what I mean? I'm no fucking dead on about it. Okay, it's, it's that scene, see where, but like, he's kind of accepted his fate. Aye. And he shouts he's dying, and then he's just shot all the blinds, and he tells her, I send up Dr. Nick. And then it's just him, himself, in darkness. But like, stuff like that, that was good. But see, like I said to you, you see that the, maybe the first, I don't know, maybe say the first 40 minutes, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, what the fuck is this going on, man? It's like, it was like, like the Colonel, right? The Colonel story. And then, oh, I, th- there was Elvis. And then it was a bit of Elvis. And then it was, and you're like, ah, oh, right. So show the meteoric rise of Elvis then. And then it was just, Fast tracked on it. Aye, fucking flash, 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 and you're going, all right. I <laughs> know what I mean. I never realised that till you said it yesterday, and I thought about it a bit. And you're right, it kind of long as long as the film run for two hours, 40 minutes, two forty. I, I would say, aye, so probably the first 40, 45 minutes, maybe 50 minutes is getting you up to late 60s, early 70s, isn't it? Up to where the story's getting told. Aye. Like, I know what you mean. It's as if, look, everybody knows fucking 1954 to 1966, so let's just get that out of the road. Uh, the cuddle, <laughs> you see a bit to say, it was me fun, it was me go up there, like, me go up in places and stuff. Aye. Uh, and then the story kind of really, really starts. And aye, it's fucking, it's hard not to gravitate towards the end of it because that's obviously the best bit and the hard hitting bit. But there's some, it was clever. I like the way. You've seen it through this warped old man's fucking eyes as if he would have been nothing without me. Aye. See, that's the kind of aspect. That, and see, and saying that as well, see, obviously, after going to see it and stuff, like, started fucking doing like a deep dive into stuff. Aye. And some of like, the main points that you thought this guy was an absolute bastard are only true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> know what I mean? What, um, what was that? Fucking. Uh, that bit where the colonel's trying to get him to change his image and stuff. No, how for then like El- Elvis, Elvis the pelvis fucking thing they said. Aye. That wasn't true. Apparently, the colonel was all for it because it, it, it sold it. That's what everybody was coming to see. Know what I mean? And then, as far as like threats for the government, you need to do this. Mm-hmm. Or what? Apparently, that was a lot of shit as well. Aye. But I've read Thing Me, would you call it Priscilla's autobiography as well on him? Well, I've not read it, I've read extracts of it. Mm-hmm. And she said as well, there was guaranteed block gigs, right, for talking sake, you can do St. Louis or the state of Missouri, you can do 20 gigs guaranteed, but we'll only sign it as long as he fucking stays still. And that was what was making the colonel think, 20 gigs, guaranteed, money in the bank, Elvis, don't move. And then mm. Elvis was getting pissed off with that. So it was always a money thing, but I, I, you're right, it's not like movies everywhere. There's nothing Aye. 100% ironclad. He was convicted, we should say, he was convicted in a court of law after the fact. 
after Elvis died, after he died, is to have like done him out of millions. So we can't uh-huh. really fucking argue that point. But um, I, I'm sure he was, it was, he done a lot of good for Elvis as well, didn't he? Aye, aye. It's just, it was just a lot. Of it. it was just very fucking because I like obviously every film needs like a fucking like a villain. Sort of thing. Aye, know what I mean? But it was like, is all this true? <laughs> no, I mean, because the guys need and they can't store it up for yourself, and it's not as if anybody's going to go, Well, no, you're wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. Imagine it being a fucking Masters of the Universe fucking biopic and it starts off with Skeletor. <laughs> I found you, man. <laughs> nothing <Aye>. before me. <laughs> it was just because what, well, let's see, like, you it's the make out that he is the fucking major. Bad cunt, not that, and he was bad to Elvis, which it was bad to Elvis. That's that's no getting around about it because he did trap him in Las Vegas. But Priscilla would invite him to Graceland for anniversaries and stuff. So I'm like, see if all that was the way he was treated, then why are you still inviting this cunt run? I know Elvis generally did, they made that quite clear. And Elvis generally did love the guy, you know what I mean? That's what. It hurt him so much when he found out about things and where where the fuck's my money and do you know what I mean? But it it kind of overshadowed the fact that there's a colonel there, right, and there's Elvis there. But see all that in between bit, all the people that were at fucking at the ranch all the time, spending his money, drinking his drink, eating his food, all these people that were meant to be his pals and family were yep. fucking take take taking as well. But his dad just Fucking lost his scrot when never never stood up for him either. Aye, aye, he's fucking. <sighs> it's, aye, you know, like you say, it doesn't he tell you any of that stuff goes well. You kind of really find that out, isn't it? Assuming it comes to, well, Elvis finds out that the colonel's been holding him back, not letting him go to uh, tour the world and stuff, which that was true. I know, I, do you know, I never ever knew that. I found that fucking staggering. It was one of the first times I looked up and I came out, I went, Elvis never played. Outside America, <laughs> and fucking true. The only time he was outside America was when he had a fucking army uniform on. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly, mate. Fucking, but um, eyes when he finds that out, and because the whole thing as well, Elvis firing him when he's on stage, that never happened either. No, oh, because I fucking hunted fine low for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's when he goes, then he starts doing that itemized list. No. <laughs> the, the list was real. The list was actually real. Aye. See that fucking... Batman he just jot this down. 1956, Aye. fuel to Tallahassee, one dollar thirty seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you bastard. You're doing that, aren't you? <laughs> that's, that's when he kind of makes it clear to him as well, but isn't it? he's like, ah, eh, Elvis, you've spent all your money. All your hangers on there. They've spent all your money. You've took for me and I've took for you. Mm-hmm. But if you're leaving me, I want my Jew back. <laughs> so, if you consider the first the first extract was like a dollar thirty seven for for fuel, it gets up to about eight and a half million. Aye. What the? How long did that fucking list take, man? Exactly, man. Right. <laughs> but in fact, it just shows you that a person like that. Mm-hmm. Well, you've seen how smart that guy was as well, because like, oh, it's even a lot uh, the pony or the Elvis merchandise and stuff, and it was like the badges. I love Elvis, but then that other bit. I hate Elvis. And he's that well. Exactly. Genius. You know I, I mean, mean? profiting after your haters. Fucking. Huh? My jaw fucking hurt the flirt when I seen that. And then they explained, because even when he first said, I hate Elvis, I'm like, where the fuck's that there in there? And right. then he explained it. I'm like, oh, you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're a different kind of fucking breed, you, mate. You're brilliant. Uh, but see, 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 and saying that, how, how much did they make Elvis? That way, know what I mean? Aye, aye. It's I just alluded to the fact it was kind of the first big outside Disney. It was a first kind of merchandised person, wasn't it? Aye, that's it. The first like superstar that fucking had everything. So you talk about all that, the running joke in films now is all my faces on lunch boxes and all that. I think Elvis was like the first lunch box. <laughs> know what I mean? Exactly. Mate. Exactly. So, pardon me. I apologize. Full of, full of burpy wind here. Uh, so, story wise and stuff like that, excellent, right? So, it, it tells you about him getting into movies, 
and he, he made some big movies and all that, but he wasn't the world's best actor. He was kind of loosely based around his music in the movies as well. But he wasn't. He wanted to be an actor, and then he realised he wasn't the best actor in the world, didn't he? Aye, aye, they kind of played these strings in it, just starting mm-hmm. of kind of making music wasn't, and that's where he kind of got one of his biggest hits and all, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Aye. So, again, kind of, <laughs> that's, that's where you kind of, it's like the two sides to it, you know what I mean? It's like, obviously the colonel was a pure bastard, but in the same sense, he did, we well, were still talking about Elvis, we just wanted <laughs> to see a film about Elvis, you know what I mean? Right. So I mean, like, I'm probably like you, mate, I- I know of Elvis, I like his music, that's what it kind of stops. But this film made me want to know more. I will I would I would never be on that level. Do you know what I mean? The cunts that fucking live, breathe, and have had sideburns for their 12-year-old and go to Vegas right. every year and all that. I'd never be on that level. And, but I can understand. See, before a the time there was social media. This guy kind of in his life, he has done everything and get fucking caught for it. He's tested the he's tested the boundaries, tested the barriers, made the mistakes. And I think in that sense, he was a kind of pioneer for the bands and singers of the 60s, 70s and 80s to better know they are or better watch what I'm doing here. Because he just done things and right. then he told he was wrong or it was good or whatever. The, in a culture they know that we're in movie-wise where that it seems to be the fucking need to have a nod to today's society with LGBT, woke, or that kind of the left and stuff. Although there was reference to this, it was perfectly in sync with the time aye. of what was going on. Do you know what I mean? And that's where it ended, wasn't it? Aye, aye, because it can, it's at the, the meetings with Benny King and stuff, and that, isn't it? he's like, oh, listen, you can do what you want on stage, you can sing these things and all that because you're white. <laughs> that's it you're not going to get arrested you know what I mean and it's uh-huh. showing you back then you know what I mean well it even shows you that the, the concert at the baseball field segregation you know what I mean aye uh, uh-huh. like, fuck's sake man <laughs> is it, that, this is an age unfortunately in America which is meant to be the greatest power in the world where the colour of your skin could get you taken away and fucking lost do you know what I mean uh-huh. shocking but, that's, that's the whole part of it as well wasn't it? It, it, aye this is it's a perfect example of why we can learn from history because it's factual and it's no overblown, it's no overpowering the story. You don't come away from it thinking about that. It's in there, it's part of it, but it's no enveloped the fucking characters and the storyline, which, which was refreshing. I liked Aye. that. Well, it was bad what happened, obviously, bad what happened. Aye, <laughs> definitely. Aye, because that's, that's part of the whole thing. Um, where, um, the colonel getting... Like kind of interrogated with this these government officials, and it was because Elvis was singing black music, yeah, and they didn't like that. They thought it was going to be, it was like an inroad for black people to take care of America and all this. This is how fucking backwards fucking people were. You know what I mean? Right. But a very warped fucking sensor. Aye. But train of thought. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and and she so thinking about it, mate. It was only 10 years before it, these people were fighting against tyranny, against Hitler, all that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly, it's fucking... W W two. Aye, you know what I mean? And it was like... I can kind of see what they were trying to do in the film as well. Um, that Elvis up there singing this kind of music and stuff was like... It was branching stuff. It was like trying to break black music into acceptance and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But it was like, see the, the whole scene where it was like the the guy up on the podium just fuck, preaching hate and he's singing on stage and all that. And I was like, ah, come on, it wasn't like that. It wasn't a fucking, know what I mean? I, I'm out there, putting myself out there to fight this sort of thing. It was like, you know what you liked. It wasn't and he his sang. purpose. Aye, it wasn't Aye. a political gain. It was, I'm fucking doing what I want to do. I don't care. It's Aye. not about getting better than you. I'm just doing what I want to do. I don't Aye. see why I shouldn't be able to in it. That was brilliant. I loved, loved that scene, man. Um, <laughs> just <laughs> some of the actresses, the women. <sighs> Aye. Even they were surprised at their body doing stuff. <sighs> Aye. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, man. But it's like that. It's true, but you could see them all screaming. And you're like, ah, what the fuck? And if you never pioneered the fucking, the 12 bar blues and soul, there'd be any fucking Beatles, any rock and roll, any, you know what I mean? Fucking, we'd still be sitting going, I left. 
my wife and my 13 <laughs> kids. <laughs> so, I mean, mate, it's fucking, it's just, aye, it was like a, it was showing you, it was like quite a historical and all, wasn't it? It was showing you a lot Ooh. of fucking things. Because, um, well, I don't know if I found out this after it as well. well obviously, you hear a lot of the reference to the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and stuff. But I didn't you know um, Elvis tried to stop the Beatles and that going to America. See, that's... Is, fucking... it, is that just made up shit again? No, no. <laughs> there is a, a semblance of truth, but it's warped to suit your fucking argument. If you're a pro-Elvis or pro-Beatles, then you'll, you'll warp it, right? When I was growing up, and I've heard and read that Elvis... When the Beatles get big, Elvis invited them to Graceland, which is which is true. And the Beatles have said it on camera and all that and invited them. But they all said he just wanted to say hello and how you doing and welcome to America and what he's up to. And that was kind of the uh, couple of the boys, like George and I think uh, George Harrison said um it was a bit kind of offish and a bit stand. I think he was just trying to work his out mm-hmm. if, if we were a threat to him. The guy was genuine because he done it with him, done it with Tom Jones, done it with the Rolling Stones. You said, um, and many, many other bands. I think fucking Silla Black was in his house. Jesus Christ, do you know what I mean? When she was yeah. Priscilla White, um, but to think that a guy that would worry about another band, do you know what I mean? But yeah. mental, mental. Yeah. But <laughs> we'll get to uh, the later part of the story in a minute. But you think of the, the acting? Well, I've already said to you, mate, uh, the, the the boy Austin, tremendous man. He's got a, I don't, I, he's got to win. I don't mind just being nominated because as it was fucking, there was that parts that you were like, ah, that's fucking, you didn't know if it was like real footage or whatever. <laughs> you see the way they like, kind of edited the footage and stuff, like that kind of grainy look. Mm-hmm. But also, I found out yesterday, um, there's only one time in the film, and I think it's later on in Elvis's life, where they actually like mix his voice with Elvis's voice. No, See from the beginning all the way through, it's actually him singing the songs. Aye, it was fucking. Uh, Neve said this to me, uh, my daughter, and he's actually singing there. I'm like, uh, you sure? And you're right, mate. Uh, so fucking sorry, Neve. You're absolutely <laughs> right. I thought she was getting confused with the fact that it's actually him speaking and all that kind of stuff and doing wee harmonics, which is fine. But I, like you said, mate, if there's that can come out a film with Tom Hanks and fucking blow him out the water, okay. then you're like, wow. As I say, like, I mean, the, the two kind of, well, three benchmarks for me. People talk about Kurt Russell portrayal, which was brilliant, by the way, okay. but that was a film at that time. And you, yep. it's else now, but with regards to, I would say Phil Kilmer's Jim Morrison, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody with Remy Malik, and Eckhart then Rocket Man, he's he blows them out of the water. And I thought fucking Phil Kilmer's Jim Morrison was going to be beat. By the way, um, the other two, Eckhart's got a tremendous voice and sang a lot in that as well. And hats off him for it. And uh, by the way, he's in line to be the next Wolverine. I don't know. <laughs> but he's buffed up, man. But I, as I say to you, mate, I keep saying to other people, Austin Butler, whatever scene he was doing, because there's a couple of times he fucking loses an agnor that, loses his temper, he doesn't break character. There's no twang really sudden. It just, he lives and breathes a guy, man. It's fucking awesome. And like you said, I think he deserves the Oscar, man. Never mind a nomination, fuck's sake. Oh, definitely, mate, because like you say, mate, just everybody can do the Elvis thing when he's on stage, or that fucking, or uh-huh, that fucking, you uh-huh, <laughs> know what I mean? But he was still doing it, even like, see, like the, the emotional scenes when he's talking to his mom and all that stuff, and then even, oh, <laughs> if you don't know, uh, Elvis's mom dies, you <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. But even then, you know what I mean? But the only I, didn't thing know I, was, a, I didn't know he was a twin either. Uh, I know that. No, I don't know that, man. But, um, aye, because that was part of us, a fucking quiz I'd done. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then this, what was his name? That's how I went like that. 
this is how fucking stupid I'm on, mate. Yeah, I went, is Elvis Costello? Is that, is that, is that the <laughs> twin? I don't know, you just fuck all like him. <laughs> Alvin's on me. Exactly. <laughs> Aye. So, Tom Hanks, mate, as always. Mate, good man, but the only thing that annoyed me was his fucking accent at times. I'm like, ah. <laughs> what a use. And I don't know if he done it that way because it was like so, because at that time, nobody knew where they came from. So I don't know if that's why it was a bit fucking... But there's enough footage out there. I've seen it after the film. And the uh, colonel doesn't sound Dutch at all. In any of it. So uh, weird. Because apparently that. he picked up that accent during like, the, the carnival days. Aye. Uh, so I'm like... But as well, apparently he's linked to a, a murder in Holland. Oh. <laughs> so that was part of the whole... Uh, he didn't want Elvis to go abroad and stuff. Because uh, he would, yeah. He didn't have a passport, didn't he? You know? That's it. Which was quite sneaky and quite good. Uh, I liked that. Didn't like it for Elvis, but I liked it in the story kind of thing. Uh, um, so we, we kind of meet her on, and he's done the movies and stuff like that. He's now wanting to just slowly get back into the music. Colonel says, right, we'll do this, we'll do a Christmas special, and why don't you wear the jumper and all that? Which, sort of... again, wasn't it true? No. Nah. No, I see the whole Christmas theme and the Christmas jumper and stuff. Uh, that wasn't true. The only thing that made this a Christmas special is it was going to be released in December. So again, that's how I was like that. I mean, you already know the guy's a bastard. You know what I mean? I knew that before I seen this film. So I was like, why are you adding me a bastard to it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Aye, but it was, it was, and it was since the movie, it was brilliant. I can just show you the rebellion, didn't it? Just him with the biggest fucking red Elvis sign behind him and all that. And the movie portrays him as reinventing yourself and just winning over these people that think he's fucked, think he's at it. And the lassies, Nick, like, hey, he's still got it, big man. And the black leather <laughs> trousers and the like. <laughs> Aye, then came the fucking, the, the most annoying part in the film for me. Fucking. You hear a gunshot. Bobby Kennedy's been shot. What did he say? Bobby Kennedy's been shot. <laughs> you have a fuck. Oh, fucking hell, man. <laughs> uh, for people listening, this is two people that were fucking talking pure loud yesterday in the cinema when Chris was trying to watch a movie, wasn't it, mate? Aye. Uh, and it was like a couple of times it was like that. Like, oh, what? Genuinely. You hear that fucking gunshot, right? And then it couldn't be any uh, clearer. Bobby Kennedy. I think there's another four people say it in the room. Bobby Kennedy's been shot. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> That's, oh. You know what? I'm going to put that into she snuck in a packet of McCoy's and she just crunched into one when the important <laughs> bit happens. That happens to me all the fucking time. <laughs> oh, I missed that. That sounded important. <laughs> but see, see where she's gone. Where well, she's gone, fucking um, what did he say? And he's gone, oh. and he didn't have a whisper voice. See that. Lean in and go, Bobby Kennedy's been shot. No, it was Bobby Kennedy's been shot. And I'm like, so I'm hearing them getting pissed off, and then I missed the bit, the next bit. I'm like, that. Oh, I see you as bastards. <laughs> hey, that's what happens with your cine world in the East End. <laughs> see, it was a fucking Friday the 13th for them. They would have thought it was actual fucking full D because they'd have been chopped up. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you go to Forge? Aye. I just took a, a stop up. Uh, how is it? Comfy? Uh, it's it's weird because it's, it's like the weird screen and all that, but they've actually they've raised the screen up there and they've made the seats look kind of like bucket. I mean, oh, I mean, well, that's not so bad. So kind of tilted. Uh, I think the last time I was in there was to see Papa show in a movie three years ago and it was in dire need of an upgrade. Now, seats wise and stuff like that, it was a bit uh, solid and uncomfortable, but that's good, mate. It sounds good. Uh -huh. um, so, back to the film. We're getting on to the, the colonel's like, agreeing the Vegas thing from on his behalf. Yeah. Uh, I thought as a spectacle for us watching this, see this, the whole Vegas stuff, it was fucking tremendous to watch. The big piece band, the lights, the people even in the crowd with the fags and the champagne and all that. And I, I've, I was taken in a bit, mate. I thought I, it was great. See, that's, see what I'm talking about. You only getting to see the songs through his like his rise. That's what I was kind of looking for. 
Let's see when I he was doing. Just say that scene, aye. Aye, see that. Like the first time that they done Heartbroken Hotel or something like that. Because you're like, that would have been like, oh, aye, you can see the whole. Aye, aye that he, was amazing. I could just see him conducting. He just does that anyway. He just goes like, give me a bum 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 girls ah and bringing everybody in and give me some bass on it. Dun 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 dun. You're like, oh, that's. Fucking, you're feeling it then, man. See, I would have liked to see Mary that. I think that's my only take away from it that I didn't like was the fact that you've only seen that because in the beginning, he's already done a, a wee hit and he's on the rise, but then you don't see like a heartbreak hotel and all that becoming big. You know what I mean? Ah, just... you did miss uh, the big fucking numbers, didn't you? And Bruce Wade goes, you get one chorus of that somewhere along this the movie but you, it, it goes like that's all right for mama that's all right for me that's his big hat and it goes for there and misses out 20 doesn't it you're right Aye. i mean you're knowing i know it's kind of showing you like wee clips of shows and stuff but it would have been good to let's see like the big just like build up thing mm-hmm. you know what i mean like you can't I, right. I can see where they could have put that in the boiler that's why i say to you this isn't it a musically based film, I would say. It was, it's more just him and the Colonel. It's just Aye. two bios, man. So if you're out there wanting to go and see fucking heavy Elvis music bio, then it's no for you. <laughs> but it was kind of good enough. See what they've done with some of these songs and they kind of fitted it in with like, modern music. Because a bit, I'm sure he's walking through a corridor and it's like a, a song, one of his songs, but it's like another woman singing to another song or something for it and aye. it's just like showing you how it kind of pieced together like modern music and you know, older music know what I mean aye I know what you mean mate there's, aye, there's a spit in it it's a kind of it's a back and forth between him as a Wayne him as an adult the deep south the the club in New Orleans where the, the coloured woman singing and it's, it's kind of like soft house underneath with her eye brilliant man aye. oh and that's that as well don't it See the actress that played that, um, Mama something. Is it Mama Franklin, maybe? Aye. Uh, she just, she died. Literally, yeah, it's, it's in the news. I think she died the day. Oh, fucking hell. God rest you, hen. Was, yeah. It wasn't her at uh, Orange is New Black, in it, no? I'm um, not sure. I'm thinking another movie review for something. Uh, Sean Cat Ducary. Sean Cat Ooh. I'll look into it after me, but that's a fucking that's sad that. Jesus Aye, four, Christ. Four, four. Four. Aye, 44. Found dead. Oh dear. That doesn't sound good. Found dead. Never sounds good. Mm-hmm. Especially after a role in that. What a talented woman. Aye, definitely, uh, man. So we've got all that, mate. He's done Vegas. He thinks he's only got to do Vegas for what is it, two gigs or two weeks or something? Aye, I think it's, it's the best. opening in it. Aye. I think it was in Real life, I think it was two weeks, but I think in the movie it was five weeks or something. Aye. I think it was today five Aye. weeks. Short stint there, and then he'll be allowed to tour the world. But he does his short stint, all excited, and that's when he gets a bombshell. Your skin, we can't even afford fuel for a plane. And by the way, you can go if you want, but you owe me fucking eight and a half million first. That's the only it. way to work your way through this debt, <laughs> keep us on the life we're accustomed to. Is a great ass that I've done on a fucking napkin with the owner of the hotel, man. No, but um, I see that and made that, but it was just fucking that sickened me, man. <laughs> that, that infuriated me, especially the way Austin Butler acted it as well. The genuine Aye. upset, the anger, the fucking the hurt. That was amazing. I felt it with him. You know what I mean? Aye. It was made the the fact as well as him he's because his dad's. He's been his business manager, so he's to be looking after Elvis's money. And Aye. that's when he says to him, what like, we're broke. And it's like the fucking it's the just the heartbreak of that as well. I see the way the colonel plays his dad against him there, he gives him the opportunity. He just mm-hmm. says to him, I mean, look, don't take my word for it. If you want to go with what your dad's gonna suggest you, I mean, I'm sure he'll give you the best advice only a father can give you. What do you think, Daddy? And he looks and looks and looks and looks, and then you're like, he's shaking it, ain't he? He's going to fucking. Aye. Uh, I think do these gigs, Elvis, and uh, we'll go for there. You're like, you fucking rat cunt, man. Aye, exactly, mate. Aye, because what it's 
what the the whole problem is um, after Elvis's comeback sort of thing, he leaves the colonel. You know what I mean? He's got to do the world tours and stuff. And um, the, obviously the colonel's a mad gambler and has crazy debts. So I forgot about that, mate. He's, uh, he's about to leave. His meal ticket, really, is about to leave him. But instead of that, he convinces... I mean, that as well. See, fucking the way Elvis... I know that he trusted this guy and all that and he was with him for years. But it's the way this guy could just manipulate him. I'm like... A lot of get a bit. I mean... Aye. Maybe he was the first... But I, I know in our lifetime, movie stars and musicians have all been taken for fucking a ride because... Mm -hmm. You're talking like your big cutters like Billy Joel and people like that. They're just making squillions of pounds that all these millions gone missing just wasn't they computing. And it was always their nearest and dearest one. It? it was like their, their brother that was their fucking manager and stuff like that. <laughs> That's it. And it's like fucking, like, seriously, man. You believe like, that? Wesley Snipes done fucking time because Aye. The manager didn't pay his tax. Aye. Aye, you pay is... my tax. Of course I'm paying your tax. <laughs> It's the same way Nicholas Cage, I you know. That's why he's, he's done every shit movie ever since. <laughs> That's right. He's, he's still well done. He says, I don't even read the script. I just say, uh, yes. Because uh, yes. he just needs the money, man. Aye. I need to see his new, you know. I know. I know. I know. De I keep forgetting about fame that. Or something. Um, Do you know the funny, uh, the funny thing with Nicholas Cage as well is his affiliation to Elvis. Do you know what I mean? Uh, he blew it. A lot of money on um, El that Elvis memorabilia, which was fucking fake, uh, and even married fucking Lisa Marie, didn't he? Aye, uh, he's quite. And he's, I don't know. Nicholas Cage is fucking a bit of royalty, isn't he, man? Because mm -hmm. he's he's related to uh, Capella and stuff, isn't he? Right. Aye, aye, but he's even Lisa Marie says he's he married me, but I think he was marrying my dad. Yeah, you know I mean? no, oh, that's a bit weird on that cat. <laughs> Dress up like your dad, huh? What? what? Yeah. <laughs> and you start to see them appearing in public on the red carpet with the fucking Elvis hair and all that. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. But, 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 uh, mate, he's not the only person, mate. I remember seeing when we were younger, there was a, a guy here at the scheme would only wear Elvis t shirts and shit. Everybody's got one, mate. Aye. Uh, Everybody's got one. <laughs> you know, when I was doing the gigs, man, when I, well, when I was doing the gigs, when I was gigging, singing, karaoke, DJ and all that, didn't matter where I was, there would always be one guy come in with his own CD. So, like, can I sing, big man? I'm like, I ain't bothered with what I do, we better with that. So, I'll put one, you want? I'll, I'll, no, no, just put that disc in. <laughs> like, oh, no, we've got a fucking warmer here, man. <laughs> oh, what a guy that's fucking my size, my fucking build, get up and try to do all that, man. Fucking right. take his hip, nearly breaking his fucking hip. No, it's fucking... But I, that, that's the whole thing. It's, um... So while Elvis is on stage, obviously, rocking the hoose, practically, you know what I mean? A sensation. Um, mm. The guy that owns the hotel was making him a deal, how much to keep him here. And it's five million for Elvis, which is what Elvis was worth when mm. he died, which is fucking unbelievable. Aye. Um, that, was, that was five million plus your debts. That you was coming or wiped in it. Aye. All your debts are wiped, and you've got a unlimited line of credit, so you could just gamble in that hotel as long as Elvis was there. Imagine getting a fucking a gambling addict, unlimited unlimited line of credit. Aye. <laughs> it <just> makes <laughs> the five million Elvis is getting look like fucking wallies. Not I mean exactly, but the whole point of this was Elvis was going to do this. Meanwhile, they sorted out security for this European tour and the world tour and stuff because the colonel apparently says it was all there's no security and then there was death threats and stuff. Aye. Um, and although it never shows you him doing it, it's him, isn't it? Aye. He's, well, they, they think some of them might have been him, but FBI, see, because of the whole, they didn't trust Elvis what he was doing and all that, he was always watched sort of thing. Aye. They did actually say some of the death threats were genuine. Aye, him, Monroe, Kennedy's, not that Aye. kind of error. It was Cuban Missile Crisis. Every country was a spy, wasn't it? <laughs> that was it. Kept tabs on them. <clears throat> so, but I See that just that whole sea for their own words, man, you're like that. That's fucking... 
sad. That's what I came back. I say, it's, 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 people, it's a good film, but it's just sad how that ended yeah. up for that guy. Just, that's the word. You've said it perfect. It is. It's really sad that towards the end because you're seeing him after that, after he's been hoodwinked into heaven to do these gigs now. So you've mm-hmm. watched him on the stage. The performances and the voice never wane, right? Flawless, but you know he doesn't want to be there. He wants to be in fucking London or fucking Paris or something. Yep. It was promised, do you know what I mean? And again, he's out there. And then even the colonel says, kind of, well, before we fast forward to that, but he's basically, you talk about Dr. Nick, he's failing, his body's failing. Yep. The pressure's getting to him. And he's basically, it leads to him being put in a coma in between fucking gigs, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's just, because I was like, again, I looked at the numbers for how many he was doing and stuff. He was doing two shows a night, right? And it, I think it worked to like 636 fucking live shows he did across five years or something. You know what I mean? I know it's like, no, you know how... Like, most people, think... <laughs> but most people think you see when you think Elvis, they think he fat Elvis in the white jumpsuit and Aye. all that shit, and you're like, you don't think how that became what it Aye, was. I, 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 you're right, they think I joke Elvis. I'm yep. guilty of it. This fat guy sitting in a leotard that died in the toilet eating a cheeseburger. No, which is probably <laughs> fabricated and all, but no, Aye, you're right, mate. I never questioned once how the fuck did they get to that. Because it was only less than 10 years before it, you look at him in Jailhouse Rock and he's this fucking beautiful looking guy, you know what I mean? That's it. And Because I always thought that myself. Why did everybody fucking love him know that? Because I just thought it was like Elvis. It was, he was fat Elvis all the way through it, you know what I mean? I know how <laughs> his world goes on. Like, all of his different, there's different tastes. That's what people fancied back then and all that. And you're like, all right, aye. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you're saying, mate, as well, about it being really sad and we're watching these gigs and knowing he doesn't want to fucking be there. I was actually getting fucking... I know these cunts are only actors, but seeing the people in the crowd watching them, Aye. I just felt like, fuck yous, man. Exactly. Who's are killing this guy? You know what I mean? But was, <laughs> that's how it made you feel, which is testament to the directing, man. Aye. Because Aye, in that scene as well, see when he comes off stage, he's kissing all these women and stuff. And... You hear the colonel again because Priscilla's in the crowd as well, mm-hmm. and as he says, he says, "I seen it in her eyes that night that she knew she couldn't compete with the love that he got for the crowd." Because he says in the end, that's that's what killed Elvis. It wasn't him that killed Elvis; it was the crowds. And that, ah, you're right, mate. And that that was heartbreaking. I know. Just the last talk I had with her in the airport and the motor, and she's genuine concern for him and. Do you know what I mean? She couldn't be his wife anymore, but she would always love him. And then he says that to her, <laughs> he's fucking, I'll always love you. And fucking tearing up thinking about it now. Aye. And then every time you hear him singing that, you're thinking he's singing to her and she knows that. Aye. I mean, that was sad as fuck because it was like, she's like, right, come, come to this rehab place and get yourself sorted out and all that. And he knows. But if I go and get myself, that's how it's like, it kind of leads you to believe that. Elvis killed himself intentionally, so you're not looking after himself. Because if he was alive longer, he would have had to have done the Vegas shows longer. Aye. So I think that's where he, he kind of turns her down without turning her down, sort of thing. Uh, there's a kind of a twisted romance about that, about him working himself to death. Aye. They make a point. Do you know what I mean? Aye, I, I like what you're saying there. I get that. Aye. Totally get that. So that's kind of the last time she sees him in person. Um, it's then you see A, he's fucking he's hoodwinked into doing this B, like you said he's going to prove a point and fucking want to sell to death and C, he's chose it over her so mm. it's a, an amalgamation of things and then we're very quickly onto the fact the colonel's talking and then he just goes right in there saying the last time I seen Elvis I watched him on, on stage he could barely stand and somebody had to help him to this piano and then I watched as he delivered the best vocal, you know what I mean, I've ever heard in my life. You like uh, I know, mate, that was fucking, see, just seeing that as well, mate, that was fucking pure heartbreaking, man. Mm. <laughs> it was like, he's seen that performance and all that, and then now you like, see some of the songs he was singing, 
and you hear them now because you thought of them different before, but see, like suspicious minds and all that shit now. Oh. And you hear it, and it starts out I'm caught in a trap. You're like, Aye. "What the fuck is this now?" Know what I mean? And you think of the songs differently. And I can't walk out. Aye. <laughs> know what I mean? And it's just shit like that, man. But it's like that scene because it's, it's still uh, the actor Austin. He's still Elvis at that point, and then it switches to like the real footage, and you can't tell the difference. No, know what I mean, and then. You go to the movie theatre, get him, and you get it on YouTube and watch him get helped to the piano. You watch the Coke Cups, exact same, and uh, the guy coming out to hold the mic. And even he's fucking, he's fucked, man. He's bloated, obviously, through the, the pills. Uh, sweat's belting off him. He's physically incapable of fucking stoning at a microphone stand. That's why he's sitting down. Mm-hmm. But this voice comes out for fucking... The bowels of his fucking soul, and it's amazing to watch. And even has before he starts, he just says to people, "He's, he's nearly half sleeping." How you like this so far? <laughs> I mean, you're still here. Fuck's sake. <laughs> aye, aye. There's a bit in the film I know that I found it was fucking. I was disgusted and all, man. But it was like obviously it's vital to see that. But he faint. Well, at the start, the film he faints in a corridor. Uh huh. But as he's lying there, he sees his manager, this guy that he trusted, and. Fucking thought was looking after him and all that. And obviously he's fainted and he's like, ah, whatever happens, make sure you get this guy on stage. Aye. Know what I mean? That and was then he, even his dad, his dad's like, ah, nods. I know. And you're like, ah, fucking. And I've not seen that that's untrue. I've seen, I've seen a couple of things that say that is true. That that actually happened. And But Priscilla knew there was no saving him. Do you know what I mean? There was fucking. Aye, Aye gone. He was getting woke up. I mean, he was chemically walking back up after being chemically put to sleep and going like that, right, you're on in half an hour. Yes. Here we go again. And then robotic. And that's, what a waste, man. Uh-huh. But as a film, mate, I thought it, again, it, uh, it's kind of touched me in a way I never knew it would. And that's why I'm saying it's up there just behind the Batman as my film of the year. It was level pegging, but it's just behind there because <laughs> Batman's Batman, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but as an acting performance, I can't see, I've not seen, and I can't see anything on the horizon this year that's going to compete with, with Austin Butler. Nah. I, I, I can't be, there has to, there would need to be somebody who comes out and does something fucking absolutely phenomenal. Nah. It would need to be like fucking, I don't know, Matthew McConaughey and Dallas Buyers Club good. You know what I mean? Oh. It'd need to be something. Oh, that now you've got me fucking. Confused about the next movie we're going to do. <laughs> a bastard. Oh. Uh, but listen, I would recommend anybody watching this, listening to this, go and see it on the big screen. I, d- I don't think it's going to have, I know I say it all the time, but it's another one of these ones that's not going to have the same impact on you. What, sitting on your couch watching it in the telly, I don't think, you know what I mean? Aye, because it's, it's obviously the same director that done The Great Gatsby. And it's all this, it's all glitz and glamour and stuff. Like you would imagine comes with Elvis. Very underrated film, that, by the way. The I don't think it gets the fuck- oh, aye. I don't think it gets the fucking the plot it should have. I really do. And that's with Toby Maguire in it, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's not the best actor, I don't think. Uh, it's the best Spider-Man, but... He's the best of both. He's the best Peter Parker and Spider-Man collab. Yes, yeah. whereas Tom Holland's a good fucking Peter Parker and Garfield's a better Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. This is why we love the fucking Marvel and DC and everything fucking comic bookie. Yeah. Um, final scores, mate, out of 10, what are you giving them? Oh, I'll give it a, 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 an 8.5. 8. The only, 5, thing it, only thing it takes that away for me was you've only seen the hits. You've only seen the him like coming up way stuff, if you know what I mean. Cool, no, I can totally, can totally see that where you're coming from, it totally. Um, I will give it, yeah, a nine, mate. That's again uh, half half of my explanation for that. I can't explain it. it. Just sometimes you go and see something, and it just mate, I will, I will say, I know there was a good couple of times I got goosebumps. Yeah, mm-hmm. see the the bit of the the baseball field there. He's come back, but. And then obviously the the big stage in Vegas, and then the bit at the end. Mm. Know what I mean? 
So it was well, we always say, mate, if a film can make you feel sad and angry and emotional, uh, it's fucking it's ticked your boxes, isn't it? Nah. It really has. Uh, it's so definitely it. good. I would re- recommend people go see it. Brilliant, mate. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, so there you go, folks. That was Elvis. Uh, spoiler rated for you. And uh, we now move on to thinking about next week. And it's my choice again. Aye. So, I uh, you done Predator, didn't you? Aye. So, <laughs> I've had a couple of thoughts, Nora. And I think it's time to go down the route of an animation. Oh. Classic. But it's not going to be an animation classic. You might fucking say, oh, it's got to be a Toy Story. Oh, it's got to be Shrek. It's got to be something else. We are going to review and critique, in my opinion, the best animated film of the last 20 years. So it's Megamind. Megamind, mate. <laughs> Megamind. The regular listeners and viewers to this show probably like that. Megamind. I'm telling you, right? I've probably had to watch it, right? <laughs> Go through a choice because my boys are only fucking no even four yet. Now I've watched this hundreds of times and I don't ever fucking watch it with them and think oh, I need to can I see this again? It's still brilliant. Uh, just as man. Uh, well my, my my dad actually likes that and all, so there must, there must be something. <laughs> Dad's a good guy. He was traveling <laughs> traveling uh, America there, going to all the good points. Oh, he was, aye. aye. I, I don't need to go to New York. I've seen every inch of New York via pictures. Aye, via pictures. <laughs> I definitely want to go one day. So there you go, mate. You all right with that? Mega mind. Aye, aye. sound. I was, I was wondering when we were going to get in this route, but aye. Aye, I've just... Nobody wants to hear about fucking Toy Story and all that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I don't think anyway. Well... If you do what I do, Toy Story didn't line me up. Sorry, you know what I mean? <laughs> I just froze away my list. <laughs> I, no, I just I generally do have a, a deep love for this film, and it's uh, Will Ferrell, Brad Pitt, Jonah Hill. Can't really say more than that, can you? It's, yeah, superheroes. Aye, and it's Brad Pitt talking. You don't get need to see his fucking cutting. Aye. No bad. <laughs> So there you go, my man. I will let you crack on. I will get this out on the uh, audibles and the visuals throughout the day. Yes. Yeah, that's when you find the time, good sir. Cool. <laughs> what are you up to for the rest? Are you going to see anything else this weekend? Uh, I don't know, mate. I don't know. I might go see the black phone. I'm done for that at a very late time on Sunday, so I can see me fucking maybe try to go earlier than that or... Mm. I think it was a bad move today, 10 to 10 at night when I'm up at half five in the morning, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. got to see uh, Maverick eventually tomorrow after I go to Ibrox. So, look forward to that. And the, the picture hole I'm going to see it in, is about, it's about 20, Hodge, about 20. Aye, it's going to be very intimate. I hope it's not going to be very intimate. I hope it was only me there. <laughs> Strip off there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as long as you don't get there too behind me. What did he say there? <laughs> oh, but we're, uh, what was it? Thor, Love and Thunder. And there was a group of young young boys and it was getting to trailer time and the phone was lighting up all the time so I just fucked an M&M at the back of his head. It's one of the wee, now, 14, 15 year old boys turned around and go, are you fucking then? Oh. And he built that. Oh, you're a big cunt, aren't you? Aye, aye. <laughs> Phone's <laughs> off, mate. Aye. <laughs> oh, oh, well. All in good spirit. Right, mate, see- enjoy the rest of your day and thanks for hanging off all morning for me. And ah. My life is, is a hectic mess. Yes, no worries, mate. But I love them. So, <laughs> catch you later, mate. <laughs> catch you, mate. And action! <laughs> Trust me. Grow up.